this month, we're going to be highlighting a lot of the technology tests and demonstrations happening on board the ISS. Uh, today, we're going to talk about one that's actually using a piece of technology that many of you probably have in your hand right now. Uh, Lori Meggs is standing by at NASA's Payload Operations Integration Center at the Marshall Space Flight Center to tell us a little bit more. Lori? If you have a smartphone, then you already have half of this experiment. It's called Smart Spheres, and it combines a smartphone with the Spheres free flying satellites that are on the station for a technology demonstration. We caught up with Terry Fong from NASA's Ames Research Center to learn more. So with Spheres, we've been doing some work over the past few years of turning it from being a satellite into a free flying robot. So what does that mean? Well, for us, that means actually converting what was originally designed as being a microsatellite, something the size of a volleyball, into a robot. And to do that, we've had to add a processor, a cameras, a display, and if you put those all together, that basically turns into a smartphone. Wow. That kind of blows my mind. So how did you get, make that connection that you could do that? Well, you know, we were looking for a way to, to basically add, you know, sensors and a camera and processor to the spheres. We were sitting around in a conference room, everybody's got their smartphone on, saying, boy, wouldn't it be great if we had some sort of, you know, high-powered computer in a box, and everybody's like, oh, like one of these? Um, and a few years ago, that turned into our first smartphone, which we sent up on the last shuttle flight, and we've been using it on station for the past three years. Are these like our typical smartphones, or are they a little more advanced? Well, the, the, the new one, the Project Tango phone, has got a, a built-in 3D sensor. It's basically the same kind of thing you see in an Xbox Connect. It allows you to basically do 3D mapping, tracking of things uh, in, in the real world, and we hope it allows us to take the, the spheres and fly freely throughout the U.S. segment. Why is that important to learn how to do that? Well, right now the spheres operate with an external positioning system. It's a set of these, these ultrasonic beacons, which allows us to fly around in basically a two by two by two meter volume. So a pretty small test area. If we want to fly anywhere in the station, we have to find uh, you know, technology that will let us just free, uh, you know, free, freely fly. And uh, the, this new smartphone may be a way of doing that. We've done actually a lot of testing on the ground. We also did uh, a series of parabolic uh, test flights on a zero-G aircraft back in February to try to test out the smartphone and the combination of the smartphone with spheres. And we're pretty confident that we'll be able to actually do this 3D mapping and navigation. So the obvious question might be, so you can do that with the parabolic flights and you can do it on the ground. Why do you have to do it on the space station? Well, because there are, there are a lot of things that you just can't you know, do uh, you know, on the ground fully. Uh, even though the parabolic flights are a really great way of getting into microgravity, you only get microgravity for a few seconds, maybe, maybe 10 to 12 seconds. Um, so your testing is really, hurry up, let's test for a short period of time, hurry up, let's test for a short period of time. It's not like in space, uh, it's not like in true microgravity. The work we've been doing with Spears really is just uh, a precursor to what's going to come next. Uh, my current project, uh, the Human Exploration Telerobotics project, is actually wrapping up in just a few months. But there is a follow-on project, the Telerobotics 2 project, that's actually going to develop a new free-flying robot for the space station. And we're going to take everything we've learned with the Smart Sphere system and roll that into this brand new free-flying robot that hopefully we'll see on station in the next two to three years. And as we take a live look into the Payload Operations Integration Center, busy at work today, they are helping with the Rodent Research Project. We want to remind everyone that the Destination Station Technology Forum will be here in Huntsville October 27th. That will be broadcast live on NASA TV from 9 to 10 a.m. And you'll hear from many other experts like Terry Fong who are talking about the technology demonstrations and how the station is benefiting us here on Earth.